You're with Julian on the brown note and Scott Morrison, the Liberal Party has a problem with rape. Now, we've heard about the Liberal Party having a problem with women for some years, but it really does seem that rape is a large part of this problem. And last week, I went into great detail about the Brittany Higgins rape allegations. And this week, I'll be focusing on the later developments, and I will be naming names as there's no legal reason not to. Um, I can't remember the guy's name from the Brittany Higgins one. Uh, as that was um, broadcast all over the internet anyway. Um, and I think that is now ongoing with the police. Um, but you can find his name very easily. He's a nobody. He, he was a, a senior Liberal staffer who took an intoxicated woman who I mistakenly said several times last week had sex. She didn't have sex. She was raped. Um, and uh, Brittany was then dissuaded from pursuing the matter and the guy is now accused of four rapes, uh, and the Liberal Party tried to stop her from testifying or from pursuing it with the police during the 2019 election. And that's something now she has come forward and said that that's the pressure she was put under. Several senior ministers, and I say Scott Morrison knew full well about it, and Scott Morrison is lying, and this is what I said last week, will take him down as soon as this audit trail reaches him and his plausible deniability goes out the window, he maintained that a woman raped in the offices down the hall from him, uh, which many of his senior staff knew about and many security knew about, he wasn't aware of. And he's doing the same thing with the new one. Now, I said I didn't... No, I didn't name the guy from the last one, and I haven't. I can't remember it off the top of my head because, other than this story, he hasn't actually been involved in anything. But I am going to name two names on the show this time. Now, the first one's Bill Shorten. The Liberals have come out with this rape allegation against a Liberal MP, and it's an absolute disgrace. Um, it's been made by Sarah. Henderson, a Liberal senator. Her timing could not be more spectacular. She has referred a, an anonymous historical rape allegation against a Labour MP, she won't say who, and it's just so happened to coincide with all of this. To try and use rape as a political tool, to try and make out that Labour are just as bad. No, they aren't. Labour don't have this continual drip feed of misogyny, sexism and rape allegations against them. This guy who they won't name is Bill Shorten because Bill Shorten has already been investigated twice and found not worthy of um, pursuing the matter by the federal police because uh, a woman that hates his guts basically posted on Facebook that she, uh, she was raped by Bill Shorten in 1986. And it was investigated twice, about five years ago, and the police said, there's nothing to see here. He was cleared, he was exonerated, and people said, oh, well, he wasn't found innocent. No, because he didn't go to a trial. And that's what they throw at him, is he wasn't found innocent. You can only be found innocent if you're charged. He wasn't even charged. Now, this Sarah Henderson is blocking all this information from her Twitter page as well and blocking people like crazy, has taken this old accusation and forwarded it to the police, making out that this is something new, when it isn't. It's something that was front-page news in Australia around 2014 and already investigated by the police. And what happened is the lady that accused Bill Shorten came forward a few days ago on Twitter or, or, or something similar and said that she wanted to be included in this investigation into rape workplace culture. And that is what Sarah Henderson has forwarded to the police on a matter that is already closed. So that is really sick. Um, but the other person involved is a, a new allegation of a 1988 rape of a 16-year-old girl who was drunk and who was left bleeding the next day. She went out on a date with a guy that she said is incredibly sexist and was woken up with him having sex with her and in some pretty unpleasant places too. 
Not that that makes any difference, but she was a 16-year-old girl and um, she recorded the events in her diary and told her friends at the time and the next day she was bleeding um, because of where the sex had occurred. And the guy that is the centre of all of these allegations is Christian Porter, the Attorney General of Australia, the leading legal person in Australia who just destroyed the family court is a guy accused of this historic rape against a child. Now, I'm not keeping his name secret because there's no legal case here. Um, he is the accused. I'm not saying he's guilty. And there is never going to be a trial because she killed herself last year at the outbreak of COVID. Um, I was just going to read a little bit out about that. Uh, in 1988, she was a brilliant teenage girl, clever, capable, and with the world at her feet. But the woman who made the allegations of rape against a cabinet minister, who we know is Christian Porter, is now dead, having taken her own life in the early days of the pandemic in 2020. She would have turned 50 last week. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said on Monday, the accused minister absolutely rejects the allegations. Um, this was something that was known by a number of journalists over a year ago and Scott Morrison again came forward and said I don't pay attention to rumours and didn't know about it well Scott Morrison if I was leading a government in the middle of a rape case in the middle of a rape scandal against your own staff I'd pay attention to the accusation that one of your cabinet ministers was accused of raping a 16 year old girl uh, she, people had high expectations of her and she was mindful of that. Um, in 2019, the woman began talking to trusty friends about her alleged rape in 1988 when she was 16. She said she was assaulted by a man who now holds senior position in government, uh, who she knew when they were teenagers. Um, she came forward initially and she suffered from mental health problems and eventually contacted the police at the start of the COVID outbreak saying she didn't want to pursue the matter any further and then took her own life. Really disturbingly, Malcolm Turnbull went on television this morning claiming that it's possible that she didn't take her own life. I'm not sure what that infers other than that she was murdered and that's a little bit too crazy for me even to think about. Given they get away with it every time, it's not like he's ever going to be tried. Um, and it's very virtually unheard of for a rape case to proceed if the person that was raped is dead, and I would say doubly so if the rape occurred in 1988. Now, <clears throat> some of the journalists are actually going for it on this. Again, the Murdoch Press, maybe they've decided it's time for a Labour government because they haven't really been doing Scott Morrison any favours. It seems to be the Sydney Morning Herald coming out and defending him, who is supposed to be on the side of the alternative left-wing people in this country, and that is something that I quit years ago when I had, when they told me to vote for about four Liberals in a row. I just stopped my subscription. But David Crow is in there saying, you owe this guy the benefit of the doubt, and you can't try him in public like this. No, we don't. We owe him the benefit of the doubt. Christian Porter, the guy that was outed on a ABC expose last year as being a lifelong misogynist who had treated women like dirt his whole life, deserves the benefit of the doubt. The guy who'd burnt through two marriages and just destroyed the family court, a court designed to protect women from men like him, deserves the benefit of the doubt. Someone whose colleagues all seem to know that he has a massive problem hating women. And he was outed on the documentary as someone that regularly is seen out on town drunk with young female staffers. He deserves the benefit of the doubt. I think he deserves the benefit of the doubt less than just about anyone. Charles Manson probably deserves the benefit of the doubt more than he does. So we've got, again, a situation where... A, a Liberal Party guy has been out with a girl that's been drunk and then fallen unconscious and they've started having sex with them. Quite similar cases, I'm sure you'll agree. And also that these guys were then able to move through their careers without it affecting them, 
without rape affecting them. And even if it was a staff member in the building, it didn't affect them until that woman who was dissuaded from coming forward came forward. And in this case, it took two decades for her to come forward. Now, in both instances, we've allowed somebody that has appalling views on women to exist inside the Liberal Party hierarchy and with their blessing. And in one case, the guy is now accused of four rapes and rapes that occurred after the rape of Brittany Higgins which the Liberal Party could have stopped from happening by encouraging their own staff member to go to the police about being raped at work. Imagine not being able to look to your employer for being raped at work. Imagine what would happen in any company you work for if you were raped at work. This is absolutely disgusting. I mentioned about the fall of the Roman Empire about how bad the Liberals were and about how the press in Australia has let them get away with blue murder. So their, their behaviour just gets worse and worse. And Mr Billy Plausible Deniability, Scotty from Photo Ops, won't take ownership of a single thing until he's caught red-handed. And I, and I said that I think this is the thing that will bring him down, is that he, he will not be able to survive this rape storm. And that was before this kicked off. Now, when Alan Tudge and Christian Porter were outed on this ABC documentary for their appalling treatment of women, nothing happened to them. And look where we are now. All of Christian Porter's colleagues know what he's like. A very senior lawyer came forward and said that he has had a problem with women since he was a teenager. We know that he's been married twice and he's split from his most recent wife last year. We know all these things about him, the rumours and everything else. But when we never do anything about it, what impression does that give to everyone else? I mean, what about the younger guy that was accused of four rapes? He's grown into a Liberal Party where people like Christian Porter, who everyone knows about, thrive. And if he's out on the town with an overly drunk teenage staffer, the media will know about it and they don't even tell us. Because what? He deserves the benefit of the doubt? No, you don't, Christian Porter. I ain't saying you're guilty of anything. I'm saying you're the guy that has been accused of raping a 16-year-old girl, because that's the truth. Now, the Liberal Party is in, like, some Caligula nightmare, where Scott Morrison just goes on TV and acts like nothing's happened. And he's getting pressured more and more and more. And I wonder whether the Murdoch press has actually decided with the economy in a seven-year decline and the government in such a terrible state. This is what the Murdoch press does occasionally. They decide they need a Labour government to fix the economy because the Labour government took it to number one in the world last time and they don't just give out free tax breaks to their mates and run up impossible debt. And because of the incredible moral behaviour of the Liberal Party where they're up to their neck in so many, so many corruption scandals. And this whole rape thing has just been the almost the icing on the cake of how appalling a government can be and still remain in power. So hopefully this will be the end of this Liberal government. I think it's saved Anthony Albanese. I think another two weeks of silence from the Morrison government would have seen um, Anthony Albanese replaced by Tanya Plibersek and I, I actually did a whole piece on that but he's now sitting very pretty because he just has to remain quiet which is funnily enough what he was good at doing in the first place but Scott Morrison is going to get more and more angry about this he hasn't as yet completely thrown people under the bus for each rape allegation but it's coming mark my words it's coming and Christian Porter's position is completely untenable now, he's letting every other cabinet minister wear this as well. He's letting the whole government wear this. You can bet your bottom dollar if this happened to Labour, as with Bill Shorten, it became very public, and he, he took it on the chin, and he told everyone that it was him. And this guy is still parading around after last year's ABC documentary, as though nothing hurts him, and the family court he just destroyed was there to protect divorced women from guys like this and what they can do so it's time to go mr porter but it's time to go scott morrison 
I think a train left with your number on it about a year ago. 